Hello and welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2 and uh, another Naoko Ogigami uh, extra video where me and Connie will be discussing her 2006 movie Seagull Diner. Is it Kamome Shokudu, I think is the... I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the Japanese title. I would have to see it. So this is a really interesting film. I think I mentioned it in my the other video I did, uh, me and Daisuke did for Seagull Diner. I love how... Okigami does all this weird kind of international stuff like she makes films in Japan she made one in Canada in English and then she did one in Finland with Japanese characters uh, which is this film um, if you haven't you know uh, seen that other review to were know. they actually in Finland though? yeah yeah, yeah, okay. yeah in Finland. Um, I read that like Japanese tourists like to go to that that diner I don't know oh, how, so it exists yeah I don't know how true that is I think that the previous owners they had they they removed all the stuff for the film and you know made the new decor, decor. <laughs> I'll leave that one in for free and uh, and then they put it back in but I think they've now called it Seagull Diner or they've called they've kind of you know used what you know what it was in the movie well I'm not entirely sure about that I'd love to go there actually um, I think it's in Helsinki in uh, Finland you're not that enthused because that's probably too close there's to too... home for you isn't it no it's just there's not just that... so many other countries I would rather visit before I spend money going to Finland I can imagine it's not, it's not cheap to go there anyway I, I can imagine it being a fairly cheap place to go in the grand scheme of it's things it's almost Scandinavia or is it Scandinavia it's Scandinavia isn't it? you have to look it up now yeah uh, I, did, I did read after the fact which really interested me that I think Finland is the closest European city to Japan, uh, only a 10 hour flight. So uh, I guess that's where the connection comes from. I'm not entirely sure why she decided to set a movie there. It's not Scandinavia. It's not Scandinavia. That's no, interesting. No, it's Norway, Denmark, Sweden. I knew that, okay. but I got I, I got unsure. But it's right next to Sweden, right? It's the, the next country over. Yeah. Yeah. The, the... Geographically, Finland is not a part of Scandinavia. Okay, then we'll leave it there. <laughs> But they're Nordic countries, so... Okay, no. right, yeah. But that's interesting, because when I first watched this, what I loved about it was how it reminded me of Norway. Because it was about, you know, it was... The... Yeah, yeah, but it's far up north, so of course it's going to remind me of it. No, even like even things like the plug sockets looking the same. And I'm not saying that that's a Norwegian they thing. They do that in... in... No, I know, I understand. But like even the, the streets and uh, the inside of her, like, you know, I just, just everything about it just really kind of um, reminded me of home slash quote unquote so that kind of made me already feel a little bit kind of familiar with it or just like comfortable with it and it's a it's another film which is very uh, light in terms of conflict or any real story you just have a woman who has moved to Finland and has opened up her own diner and is trying to get it off the ground but no one's really coming in and so she goes there every day. She's not trying very hard. She's not though, trying. Yeah, but I like that about it. I like that it's just this kind of she. She has this belief that I'm doing this thing, and it's gonna work out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, she's she's not very kind of. Uh... And in a way, I I've said this before. I don't know if I said it in the previous video, but I feel like this is a fantasy film in a way, in the sense that you know, she seems to have this almost you know. Where's the money coming from, you know, to fund this? I suppose she mentioned that her, her mother passed away, maybe. So perhaps it's like an inheritance that she used. So maybe not. But I do feel like parts of the film don't feel quite like real life, but I don't mind that. You know, just the fact that you end up with these three Japanese women who are all kind of in a way kind of in Finland for some reason, kind of trying to find their, their way in many different ways, I think, with all yeah, three characters. Yeah, but I found a Norwegian away bridge just by listening to her phone call. That's a good point, yeah. It is, it is a small if, world, so... If, if you are a single person, not single, like, like if you're the only person mm. around from that country, if you hear someone speak a new language or you see someone, in, in her case, you, you can kind of tell if they're Japanese. It's harder with Norwegians in the UK... But if you hear it, you're going to go and seek it out if you're feeling lonely, which she obviously was, and she needs to know the song. Sure. Yeah. We won't get into all, all of those mechanics, but, you so know, Google, but... She, she meets another Japanese woman who ends up working with her at the diner, and she, she lives with her as da well. Da-da-da. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I love, I love the little things that she puts into her films like that, like when you get a little tune stuck in your head and you get obsessed with it, you like... Ah, I just need to find out what it is. Like that's all. It's it's nothing. But you get frustrated about these little things, and then that leads her to a friendship. And that's one thing I love about the film is how friendship is conveyed in this film. You know, uh, the way that these three women come together. Well, I'd say 
in my memory, the third one, which it was also the woman who appeared in Glasses, in my memory, she came into the film much earlier than she did. But it's quite a while before the third character arrives and she kind of ends up frequenting the diner. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really just about them at the diner, really. And uh, watching it a second time, maybe not as good as the first because I just rewatched Glasses and, and loved that a lot more. It's clear to me that you liked this or liked it as much as you did because you missed Norway. Because it was familiar to you and that's why. No, that's that's a part of the enjoyment, but it wasn't like the main thing. You know, I really No, did... I'm not saying it's the main thing, but it's clear to me that that really made an impact. It did, and it still yeah. it still does. I still enjoy that aspect yeah. of it. That uh, that works for me. But I, I do love the, the characters and just how just how simple it is. You know, I love the moment when um, she's practicing her, is it Aikido or something like that? She's doing these um, lunges in her apartment mm -hmm. and she's doing it with her friend. And then suddenly she just stops and says, let's make cinnamon run, uh, uh, rolls tomorrow. And that just cuts to the, you know, the, the next shot and mm -hmm. they're making cinnamon rolls and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and obviously, I guess there is a traditional story in the sense that... Rich actually brings people in doesn't it yeah so i guess there is the traditional aspect where woman has a diner is trying to make it successful and throughout the film business picks up you know but it's more about the characters and i think maybe one thing the film could have done better actually is the the first japanese friend that she makes at the beginning of the film i feel like her character was really interesting because because throughout she's kind of like saying to, to the lead character she's saying you know would you invite me to your party at the end of the world kind of thing? Which is kind of a way of saying, have I really become your friend? Like, do I really mean something to you? Uh, and I liked that. I liked that kind of the insecurity of her, of that, but also that she really wanted her to accept her as that kind of friend. And then as the third character comes in, we kind of lose that kind of focus, I think. Uh, it becomes more about the third character and the second one kind of goes to the background a little bit. Yeah. So maybe that could have been done because I felt like that was, we start with those two really right at the beginning. But, you know, it is a film of little episodes and little moments. And uh, Tommy, the, the guy who comes in, and you were bothered by him because he gets a free coffee every time and you felt like he was freeloading. And you also weren't a fan of his acting at certain points. No. Um, I have something to say on that, but you, you go ahead first. Well, she's clearly struggling with her diner. He's the only one in there. I would never accept a free coffee and then take on a free cinnamon roll. See, I don't think he was getting those for free, but you know. He got the coffees for free, and even though they insist, I would be like, I insist. Let me help out. You already gave me my free coffee. See, I, I, me, Let me pay for the first one. Maybe I can get a refill. That's fine, but let me at least pay something. I, I get that, but like, I would understand that thing more if we saw the main character being like, oh, fucking hell. You know, <laughs> giving him like a side view, like, you know, he's still taking this free coffee, you know. But she wasn't. She was completely, you know. That's because she's Japanese. Well, I guess, I suppose it's a different culture, but you know. Yeah, and you're not really supposed to say no when they offer you anything. But something flying around in here. Hmm. Uh, but it's just if someone's struggling, help them out. Hmm. Ooh, oh hypocrite. What? Well, I don't really help everyone out, do I? <laughs> I do walk past people on the street, but I can't help all of them anyway. Right. I did give a little bit to someone yeah. the other day. That's changing the subject. But I wasn't a big fan of his, his acting either. I felt like it was... It felt unnatural. I understood his character very well because I'm basically him. Sure. Because I would seek out... I would seek out Japanese people before I moved to Japan. I went to this Japan club, actually, just so that I could uh, speak Japanese and uh, be like have people help me learn Japanese as well and maybe I would teach them Norwegian or whatever in return but it was just the acting specter of it and then just I wouldn't accept it hmm. I, I would insist on helping out or doing something yeah I, Where, I, what, I do what she does at some point he does help out with something but it's clear how uncomfortable he is about it anyway I'm gonna go home now. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, I, 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 there's a, there's parts of him where he's he's talking Japanese or he's making an effort to, and he gets very oh like that, and I can understand a character who would think that's like oh that's the way to do it and getting into it and stuff, but it does come off as a bit awkward at times. Yeah. Um, especially, 
uh, this is it Midori actually the, yeah yeah Midori yeah when they're playing with like these little like um, paper frogs and leaping them across the table and he grabs her arm and he's like oh and he's like and it's really like ooh you know it's a bit much so there are a few moments with him but I I buy it as you know a character who's just trying to be really enthusiastic and stuff maybe that's what what it is because mm. I, I, no 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 no. I'm thinking like the way they react like that is actually kind of Japanese in a way. When you've seen Japanese movies, like bring up the notebook, you know that song? How does it go? Like mm-hmm. that kind of excitement yeah. is not very European, is it? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So as a European, I feel like he's off. Maybe he's just overcompensating. But if he was a Japanese person talking yeah. to a European in Japan because I've encountered that how some Japanese people have encountered me and been super excited because we have the northern lights yeah, yeah, and yeah. fjords and that enthusiasm is just a, a cultural thing I think yeah, and you... but because he's European and Finnish on top of it it comes out weird he and does, unnatural. He doesn't know which level to I'm picture that. I'm going to kill that thing while, while you're talking. But yeah, so so that's why it felt unnatural to me. And I, I felt like it was a weird type of acting. One thing I didn't realize when I first watched it was that our lead character, she does speak Finnish at certain points throughout the film. Not many, but she does. And, and you picked up on that. I didn't because I wasn't really, I guess, even hearing uh, it or thinking about it. Because it sounds a little familiar sometimes. Right, so I Japanese. I had just assumed that uh, the case was everyone was speaking Japanese and it was just one of those things, like a movie thing, like where it's set in Germany and everyone speaks American, you know, they just they just don't care. That's what I felt like it was and I didn't mind that. But I like how that is kind of addressed in a sense where she knows, you know, Finnish or whatever. And it sounds like she knows it really well because she does have some really long sentences as well. Yeah, I, I have seen an interview with her where she mentioned that she'd been to Finland before uh, making this film. But I can't remember what capacity that was in. But she had been there before. And then... Um, she must have studied there or... I don't think that... No, I don't think it. she did that. No, I don't was, know. But maybe she's just very good at picking up languages as sure. well. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, you're an actor. Sometimes you got to kind of do these things. Yeah. And, uh, but then again, I don't speak Finnish. So I, I don't know exactly how it's supposed to sound like. Yeah, yeah. But it, it sounds really... Well done. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's the, the kind of joke where they, they take the drunk woman home and uh, Masako uh, Motai's character, she speaks to the woman and consoles her. And afterwards they're like, well, what did she say? Well, she said her husband left her and she's been struggling with these things. And they're like, oh, we didn't think he spoke Finnish. And she's like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so there are these little moments like that and the moment where she gets her luggage back. And she opens it up and it's all these mushrooms. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I, I've forgotten about That's that. That's the fantasy part. Right, but I've, forgo- I've forgotten about that. But it, it's representing something that she's she's finding in, in this trip and in that part of her life. And uh, unlike Glasses, we do get some backstory there. Like we get the main character talking about her parents a little bit. And then also um, she mentions that she had to care for her elderly parents for a long time. So we do get backstory on these characters. Apart from Midori, who's just like... I put my finger on a map. And came yeah, to but she did say why she did that, didn't she? I can't remember. Um, she, she wanted to get away for some reason. I just can't remember. Yeah, what but it, it, was. it isn't it isn't expanded upon in too much detail. Yeah. But we do get more in that sense. But if she had put her finger on Alaska, she would have gone there. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> fun little cutaway gag. Yeah. Um, and one more thing I wanted to mention was that um, there are these scenes where she's calling up about her luggage, and in the background you see this guy holding a cat. And at the end of the film, he just gives her the cat. And Why you, would you, you give your cat to someone? I like it because, and this is another, another thing where I'm talking about it being a fantasy. In the real world, yes. <laughs> See where I said that. It, <laughs> in in the real world, yes. If an old man came up to me and gave me a cat, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you know, one way you're giving it to me in terms of yourself, but also, why do you think I want it? You know, in the film, I think it's more just a case of you need this more than I do. You know, and it's just well, a, she has to stay now, doesn't she? Right, and, it, and it's a wordless thing, and I really like it. But in terms of an actual scene in reality, it doesn't quite work, I don't think. But uh, that's where I kind of fantasy is probably a, a, the wrong word, but there's a slight unreality at times, ever so slight. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of cats like being carried, so 
that's not realistic <laughs> in itself. Or, or in the scene when she's swimming in the in the pool and there's all these people around her clapping her. You know, I mean, so there's these little flourishes of you know fantasy, I suppose. So, what do you think of the film? I know just no, to, no, no. To I, I the... really did enjoy it. It's just really it, good. It, it's you know. just a very like not much is happening kind of movie, which I enjoy in itself. Uh, it is, of course, the part with uh, the Finnish guy. Uh, that's strange. That puts me off a little bit. It was something else as well. I think I mentioned to you right after we watched it, but I can't remember what it was. But I, I really did enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. So that's Seagull Diner. That's mm-hmm. kind of our thoughts on that. Uh, I enjoyed. Makes it. you want cinnamon rolls and coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> such a nice combination. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I really do love this film. It's just a really, really good one. And much like Glasses, probably one you couldn't really introduce to someone. But then it, it's tricky because I want to. I want to introduce because people don't really talk about her films very much. There's no like UK or American Blu-ray releases of her films. I feel like there should be. Yeah, but you as know a bigger film community than I do. Well, that's, I don't well, that's know. why I'm trying yeah, to do these exactly videos. Exactly, with this. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Because people who watch this are obviously interested. And so sure, yeah, exactly. You would probably enjoy this. Mm. But none of the people I know... None of my family or friends that I can think of would enjoy it because mm. it would be boring for them. Yeah. But then you know, they you, would you, probably hate me a little bit they, for wasting their life. I, it might surprise you. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't feel like it is as as clear cut as you're saying. Like people just wouldn't, you know, whatever. I, I, I don't know. No, but you know people's personalities and I you guess, know what I they guess. don't like. I guess, but then I, I like opening people's minds My a little bit. My mom know? might have liked glasses. Yeah, I think maybe. If it wasn't in Japanese. Oh, she's not a subtitle reader. Well, she, she 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 does read subtitles, she doesn't mind, but it would have to be in Norwegian. Well, that's right. Yeah. The subtitles need to be in Norwegian. Yeah. Yeah, where can you find that? Oh, I'm not thinking about practicality. I'm just in theory. I am. In, in th- <laughs> okay. But because she liked uh, Before Sunrise. Mm, yeah, okay. She was the one I watched it with for the first time. It just popped up on the TV. And then uh, I think my mom was on the way to the toilet. So she stopped and she was watching. And I was sat there watching. And after about 10 minutes, she was like, I'm still stood here, but, but maybe can you pause it? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And she goes to the toy, she comes back, and we finish the movie, and nothing happens. They're just walking and talking, mm. but it's so natural that you get kind of like, yeah, what's happening here? Sucked into it. What's wrong with this movie? You know? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, we watched these two films, and you enjoyed them, and I like that. So uh, I think maybe we'll we'll try and do one more together. I'd like to show you Rent a Cat, and yeah. I I really want to revisit that one because it's my least favorite of her films. And uh, but they, they, it's got cats in them. As long as the cats don't get hurt, I don't mind. No, there's so many cats. Yeah, just cats everywhere. So I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy that just based on that fact. And that's kind of what I did as well. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, it's all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you. Cause... <laughs>